Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to our show this morning. Uh, Rosanna and Michael good morning. and Anita, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning Revolution. Revolution. I hope everybody's doing good. Well, we got a lot to talk about this morning. We got, Rosanna, we got an NC meeting coming up on uh, yes, we do. Sunday. Very important. From 12 to 3. And uh, are you ready? Are you ready, Anita? Sure. All right, you got a report from, from Ohio or is it going to be from Florida or both? <laughs> I think we'll, we'll, we'll stick to Ohio, which is uh, where I'm really up to speed. So Florida is too big a state for me. Rosanna, are you ready? You got your I'm reports ready. all lined up? I'm ready. I'm all set to go. Just say, <laughs> call my name. <laughs> you know, I heard this morning that 500 members joined the party in January. 500. That's a whole lot of organization. Mm -hmm. Your membership uh, folks who are working, which you got to do to. And uh, over a hundred showed up for the orientation. How many? Over a hundred. Wow. wow. I believe it because I'm swamped with new members right now. It's it's wonderful, but it's it's I have to keep up with them. So sign of the times. That's what it is. Sign of the times, a sign of, you know, I, I, I have to give an update to the NC on, 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 on Sunday. And I say that the socialist moment is continuing. It's not over. I think some people think it's over, but it's not. Mm -mm. I mean, people are upset and angry and, and, and fighting back. You know, that radicalization is, is, is continuing. Speaking of which, we had a, a meeting with our comrades in Minneapolis the other night. Uh, and they've been involved in attending the protest around the killing of Amir Locke. And uh, you might be interested to know that the young people in Minneapolis are fired up mad as hell. And the high school students all across the city and in the suburbs have been walking out of school, doing walkouts, and they occupied the Minneapolis, uh, uh, the uh, state capitol. Where is the state capitol in, in, in Minnesota? Is it in Minneapolis or someplace else? I don't remember. It's not there. It's in St. Paul. It's St. Paul. Okay. Well, they, they wherever it is, they occupied it. You yeah. Know? Um, and uh, so the people are, and and there are two demands. Demand number one is that the cop has to be fired. Mm -hmm. The killer cop has to be fired. And and the second thing is that they're demanding that the acting police chief uh, be. Uh, uh, sent back, to, sent sent home as well, you know. So that's a uh, and, and and they're saying, uh, Michael, that that the people are uh, fed up with these phony reforms, that they're not doing anything, and that the idea of community control is resonating throughout the city. That that's the main demand now. Yeah. That the uh, uh, people's movement is putting before uh, the uh, public and the body politic. So uh, what they're doing in Chicago, the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression uh, is spreading. And that's a good thing, Michael. I agree. No, and, you know, talking about the reforms that were kind of being put into place um, even before George Floyd was murdered in 2020, I'm thinking of body cams and such. I mean, I think George Floyd's murder was caught by on camera, you know, with the body cam. So was that enough that that stopped, did that save his life? And then, you know, here in New York City, we fought long and hard. Um, it seemed like from uh, all of June and half of July, we were fighting uh, to defund the police um, by cutting the police budget. You know, remember, we were all camped outside of City Hall. Um, and so, but I, I'm glad to see that it's resonating what they're fighting for in Chicago for community uh, control of the police, because that's going to be the best step forward uh, to really holding these police officers accountable. Anita, 1,055 people were killed by cops, or at least shot by cops last mm -hmm. year in 2021. Uh, I think it was the Times or the Post reported 1,000. That's the highest number since they started counting. Mm -hmm. It's like the rebellion didn't even matter. Well, that that's a that's a hard um, thing to think about that 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 rebellion didn't matter. It felt that way in Columbus because we had big protests after George Floyd's murder 
and then two more young um, black men were shot down by police and killed um, in the, you know, just months uh, later. So yeah, it's it's really, it is very discouraging. And I think community control has to involve accountability at different levels, not just the cop that shot the um, uh, Locke, Mr. Locke, but also, um, and not just the acting police chief, but also those in between who ordered that you know, no no knock warrant to the wrong house. And even if it was the right house, it wasn't the right thing to do. Um, you don't go in with guns blazing and 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 shoot um, first, ask questions later. So it, I think more accountability has to be up and down the line of command in the police force. And maybe I hope community control would be a, a first step in in gaining that accountability. Rosanna, but there's a problem in, in, in the state of Minnesota because there's a law in the state passed by the legislature several years ago, which prevents uh, cities from adopting uh, ordinances uh, like community control. They're thinking about doing a ballot initiative as a pressure tactic, but in order to enforce it, they're gonna have to change it at the state level. Somebody saw this coming way back when. So that's a, uh, that's a, but it is encouraging that the people of, I mean, they must be kind of still in, in, just in shock because of these repeated killings in uh, Minneapolis. Well, we know that, that, you know, people will, it's mounting frustration and, 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 and when mounting frustration, there's a breaking point. And although we saw, we saw part of it, with George Floyd, but we'll see a greater part of it as these things continue. And, you know, that petition is not a bad idea. That's, you know, once again, it's showing the people's force and influence and, and power. So I think, you know, they should go for it. It can be changed. It was changed once the wrong direction. Let's change it back. Well, I hope they get it right because whatever happens in Minneapolis is going to have an impact on mm -hmm. what happens in the spring, summer, and in November, the midterm elections are coming. And speaking of, you know, there are two kinds of rebellions. There's a people's rebellion, and then there's a another. What's going on in Canada with these truckers? They're saying keep on trucking, <laughs> but I'm not sure I want to hear that song. Based on what I'm reading about it, uh, I mean, is it, is it, is this? Somebody tell me. Somebody explain to me. What are these? Uh, they said they got Confederate flag. Is that true? Anybody? Yes, I. It is true. They had not only Confederate flags. They had Nazi uh, uh, swastikas in evidence, and they're they're affiliated on paper and in Facebook and everything else with various right-wing white supremacist um, causes and funders uh, from all over the world. I think this is catching on in, in France now as well, but it's, it's this kind of concerted right-wing effort to be disruptive and really hold down, um, you know, uh, well, yeah, just, just squeeze. There's also been calls among that group to have a, a January 6th like attack on the parliament in Ottawa. So they they just were, it just seems to be a continuation of the January 6th insurrection in Washington, DC. I, I heard last week that the prime minister Trudeau Mr. had to go into hiding. I mean, the, the, the family, they, they, they were concerned about their safety. Oh. Um, and, 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 uh, CJ wrote an article in the People's World saying that they get they get a lot of right wing funding, uh, and that and I think they had a go funding a GoFundMe page which raised tens of millions of dollars, um, and 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 then they shut it down, uh, and, and now some Christian group uh, has or some right wing Christian because yeah. left wing Christians too set up a new website and uh and uh, Rosanna, i think they're on their way to dc well we're on our way to dc on june 18th also 
we're on our way to DC. See you that's there. Right. <laughs> people's front, anti-fascist people's. That's the most. That's the most troubling thing, though. Is uh, I think, as you you mentioned that great article that C.J. Atkins wrote for the People's World, and what I like because he's reporting from Canada. You know, he's up there in the middle of all the action. But I think uh, a big aspect that's not being mentioned in the mainstream uh, media is that truckers. They work on both sides of the border. A lot of these folks, they're you know, they're not Canadian truckers. They're American truckers that happen to be in Canada, and that's why you know the talk of them going to D.C. and bringing the protest to D.C. It's kind of troubling because it is like it's going to be a repeat of January 6th, and we need to focus on what they're demanding. They're not demanding, you know, oh, we want um, Trudeau to get out because we want you know socialism or something more, you know, quote unquote radical for the people. They're demanding, you know, they, they, uh, an end to the mask mandate. You know, they're anti-vaxxers. They have these, right, you know, they're funded by these right-wing groups, and so it's kind of troubling to me that, um, you know, recently some quote unquote, you know, Marxist uh, scholars and you know figures on the quote unquote left. Are coming out in favor of this protest you know it kind of goes back to that conversation we were having a few months ago about the phony left not all that glitters is gold and so we need to be careful you know what is as joe said a, a people's uh, movement a people's protest because this certainly isn't it this is being anti-vaccine is not pro-people i understand that that these truckers who by the way are small business people you know those those, those guys that and women that own those rigs you know, they it costs a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy a truck like that if, if you're a private owner. Number one. And number two, I hear that it's having a big impact on the economy. General Motors uh, just uh, laid off uh, two shifts, I think in Pontiac, because of the uh, crunch at the border and, uh, and uh, the exports from Canada to the United States are blocked. And that means that the cost of goods are going to go up, oil and mm -hmm. timber and all that kind of thing. So it's, <laughs> you know, they better get this thing under control. And the Truckers Association, they say it's a minority of truckers. I hope that the majority are speaking out and doing what needs to be done to bring this thing to a, uh, well, we're going to ask the Canadian comrades to send us some information, write an article, do an interview about it so that we can get a better picture. Speaking of right, right wing revolts though, I hear that Mr. McConnell and Mr. Romney and Mr. Pence now are speaking out in the last week saying that January 6th was an insurrection and that Trump got it all wrong. You know, too little, too late, Anita? Way too late. I mean, they should have um, had a, a way different response to the uh, um, the second impeachment. Um, they're allowing uh, Trump by by supporting Trump through that whole impeachment um, trial. They're allowing Trump to have another shot at uh, the presidency again. Um, it's uh, it's just unconscionable how McConnell could have had that opinion and kind of kept it to himself as if it uh, as if his actions didn't have didn't matter now it's like yeah too late rosana they 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 remind me of minnows you know them little fish <laughs> <laughs> they remind me of minnows surrounded by sharks that's the formulation i'm going to use at the national committee meeting mm -hmm. minnows surrounded by because the main thrust in the Republican Party now is so far to the right that, you know, I mean, dare they call it fascist. That's one, of, that's one of the things that we have to come to some conclusions about because Trump dominates that party. There's no question about it. And they're dry, they, they, they censured every, they censured, they called, I'm just getting so tired of talking about this. They call January 6th legitimate political discourse. <laughs> legitimate. That's They're normalizing armed right wing insurrection. That's what's. Uh, That's their right. attempt. That's definitely their attempt to do that. Yeah. And we have to be mindful of that. We have to, you know, um, learn more about what's going on and, and understand the, the different dynamics that you know of the the right wing and and the republican party there's definitely a big split that we're seeing differences uh, unfortunately you know like you said trump does have the 
has the has control over that in uh I don't know. It's <laughs> the Foley Square defendants, Gus Hall, Henry Winston, Bill Fa they Eugene Dennis, they went to jail for uh, conspiring to think to overthrow, violently overthrow the US government. You know, if if um some people are saying, I got a friend who says that the Republican Party needs to be outlawed. You agree with that, yeah. Anita? I don't know about outlawed, but I, I, I think the Republican Party is so hypocritical and their, their hypocrisy is really being exposed. One example is um, the way they used to uh, um, tear their hair out about Hillary Clinton's use of documents. And now they find that Trump has brought home uh, documents. They're saying um, that that he he tears up thing, you know, important uh, documents, and and people are saying that's why Trump has to flush the toilet ten or fifteen times because he's trying to get those little pieces of paper down. So um, so it's just uh, atrocious. They have no problem with that now. Um, I, so I want to ignore the scatological next <laughs> sentence, but I want to know. Outlaw the Republican Party, Michael? Yes or no? You know, He's positive. A political party, political parties represent classes, right? And so, you, you know, we know both parties, you know, ruling parties that represent the corporate class, but the Republicans, I mean, there's just so much evidence that they're being backed by these extremist groups and it's in their best interest this year to distance themselves from January 6th. That's why they're doing it this year, not a year ago because it's an election year and they want to win back some of those moderates who were Trump voters and then turned out for Biden probably. Who knows what they're trying to do? Uh, you know, we have to remember Pence, they had a noose ready to hang Pence, you know? And so he didn't have a whole lot to say about that, you know, last year, but now all of a sudden he does and McConnell too. And so, um, and so yeah, in terms of, you know, who they're backed by, the things that they stand for, I think they're, they're going to have to be banned, certainly under socialism. I don't think you know, you want to have these kind of groups coming around, but we'll see what they say. We'll see what the Republicans say when the truckers show up uh, here. In I month. say, I say, out loud by voting them out. Out loud by, you know, you guys, if you were on Dancing for the Stars, you were y'all dancing around this so much, <laughs> you would have wanted a gold medal. The 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 Justice Department is trying to the, the, some of these uh, oath keepers and proud for sedition. You think they're wrong to do that? These people, okay, let's think about it and think about it because the Communist Party needs to come up with a position on that, you know? I mean, I mean, they, okay, we, so um, what else are we talking about this morning? We talked about Minneapolis rebellion. We talked about the, the, the right wing trucker, rebel, yell, good old boy revolt. We talked about, feedback. huh? Feedback from our listeners. Feedback from our listeners. Okay, I got a letter here from a comrade who was very critical of a couple of our shows. And I, I appreciate the fact it's very positive that people are writing in and, and he has several criticisms. So I'm just gonna read a couple of them and see what you think. Uh, and please speak, speak your mind, because a lot of them have to do with me. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Joe opens up by joking about believers in the year of somebody's Lord. He said, if we are open to believers, why are you, why are you, uh, if we don't want people to think they were hostile, why are you joking about believers? Why go there? Anita? Do we want to take them one at a time? That's, you know, Joe would not. Uh, Joe would not be the one to. I would be the one to make fun of, uh, you know, people's beliefs, but but not Joe. Um, so I. I mean, I think we have to. We're you know we don't take everything completely literally. Uh, so I think that was. We have religious people in the party. We got pastors in the party. You know, I don't know. You know, that's who we are. So. No disrespect to people who believe our fight is with God, with capitalism, not God. You know, but my point was that why base the calendar based on Jesus Christ? We got Muslims and and Buddhists and and people who believe in different 
and the different calendars for different peoples, the Chinese guy, what is this, the year of the tiger? Mm -hmm. and, and so why, you know, that's something to think about. You know, uh, this country was founded by people with many different beliefs and, 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 and that has to be thought about. Uh, but we do need to be sensitive. Next point, he says that Russia, I said that, or we said that Russia is more democratic than the United States because Russia has more communists elected. Is that what we said? I don't remember. But... That's not what I said. <laughs> what I said is what is the more political part? Everybody's talking about the Russian oligarchs and, and that Russia is a autocracy. So my question was, what is the criteria by which you judge that? What is the Marxist criteria? Because there are two kinds of yardsticks in the world today. There's a bourgeois yardstick and there's a working class yardstick, you know? And are we measuring these things by working class standards? And, 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 and if you measure it by the participation of the working class in the political life of a country, uh, who is more democratic, the United States or the Russian Republic? That's the question. Uh, does anybody have an opinion about that? I remember you saying that the Russia, you know, the Russian Federation has more political parties represented in, in the Duma and in, in the in their parliament than aren't, and that's just an objective fact. We don't have any communists or. Green Party members or whatever, you know, Libertarian Party members in our Congress. And so I think that's just a fact. And, you know, unfortunately, we have to deal with the two party system as it exists right now. And so, you know, but hopefully we'll, you know, it's in our party program that we believe for, we believe in third party participation of building a people's, a people's party and so forth. He said, couldn't it be that the Russia is at least somewhat autocratic, but more people vote communist than here? Well, that's true that more people vote, but they have an opportunity to vote. We can't even get on the fricking ballot because, uh, you know, you got to get in, in your state, Rosanna, 100,000 signatures to get on the ballot. 800,000. 800,000. 800, you see Not what I'm either. saying? Yeah. And then so we're, banned, we're banned from the ballot in places like Texas. So. Or, or is it easier for communists to run in Russia? <laughs> and more people's that's the whole point if it's easier to run than that and here's one more thing before we end why do you keep calling the capitalists in russia oligarchs but you call the capitalists in the united states entrepreneurs i mean you know it's so prejudicial if you're talking about a, a ruling element in the middle east you call them warlords if you talk about the ruling elements in Russia, you call them oligarchs. If you talk about them here, you call them captains of industry. You know, it's it's uh, these terms are so uh, indicative of what people think about what's taking place in each other, and they're very prejudicial. Anyway, we got to end on that note. Um, good morning, revolution, everybody. Our party's national committee is meeting on, on uh, Sunday, 12 to 3. Um, we have some webinars coming up. Michael, what, have you, you got the list in front of you? We got one. Uh, there's a fundraiser that the People's World and a number of labor unions and councils are holding for the miners on Tuesday, I think. No, that's the next week. On the 17th, we have the, the Black 17th. And then we have a membership meeting on Wednesday. Um, we're going to be talking about the results of the National Committee meeting. And then we got a uh, uh, Black History Month. The African American Commission of the party is holding a webinar on police murder on the 27th, Sunday the 27th at, at 8 o'clock. Be there or be square. Until then, stay strong, uh, comrades and friends, stay safe and stay in the fight.